what I'm doing is building a storage unit for my uh, worm bin. This is going to act like an insulator. And what I did was I took two inch hard uh, pink foam insulation and blocked it in here. I had to cut this in here so the tube would lay inside. Um, there's plenty of room this way, but there's not a lot of room this way. So <clears throat> I had to cut this out. And then what I did was I lined the whole inside of it with uh, aluminum foil um, to make sure that uh, it reflects some of the heat back in towards the worm bin. You know, I don't want to run the um, heaters um, if I don't have to. I don't want to have to waste electricity just to heat this thing. And what I did was I zip tied uh, the insulation in here just to hold it in uh, <clears throat> and then drilled through and zipped it on the other side. Now what I, the reason why I zip tied this is so I could uh, take my worm bin in and out without having to uh, reposition this or, or move it around or whatever. Uh, and then what I'm going to be able to do is be able to take the worm bin out and do whatever I want with it and then put it back in there when I'm ready for it. The other issue is uh, with drainage. I wanted to keep it off the bottom because I have all the drain holes in the bottom of my bin. Uh, I don't get a lot of uh, um, liquid that comes out of my bin, so I don't suspect that it's going to be an issue um, with having it up on these blocks. And uh, I bought this 30-gallon bin at uh, Home Depot for, for 5 bucks. Um, so I figured if, if it didn't work, I could use it for something else. And, um, you know, maybe a bigger worm bin. Um, but uh, for 5 bucks, you know, I can't go wrong. And uh, I'm using all these pieces. I had these lying around in my house, so I didn't want to go out and buy, you know, one-inch insulation just to, to do this. I wanted to keep as many parts as I had from home. Um, without having to go and spend a lot of money on, on getting stuff. Um, the heat unit for the fish tank or for the uh, worm tank is it was expensive enough. Um, that's probably the most expensive part for this whole piece. So uh, um, that's what I did so far. <clears throat> These side zip ties, which will be on the inside, will be looped around holding the coil of uh, tubing on the outside of the edge. And um, hopefully it will... Uh, you know radiate enough heat in there that uh, it won't be a problem again it's going to be sticking out far enough where my vent holes will be able to be uh, you know accessed you know I don't want to close this off because you know they need the air and I don't want to heat it up too much but uh, it's kind of cold down here in the basement um, in the winter time so you know wanted it warm enough where they were actually still you know uh, being productive and um, just trying it out okay okay so I have installed all the tubing to go around the inside of the bin and if I put my worm bin in it's an extra 18 gallon that I have and you'll notice that there's gaps in here I'm going to have to figure out probably uh, with some newspaper or some foam spray insulation or something to get in there, which would kind of negate the uh, aluminum foil, but it's the only way I could get that in there. Now, if you do wind up doing this, <clears throat> try to put this zip ties a little closer to the corners um, so they're not that far over my original hole was here and what I found was happening was is that this was not pulling tight enough into the corner and uh, it was really a pain to get this stuff to get right in there um, it just takes time to to do it all so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn on the pump and see if uh, I get uh, water going through. So let's see if this works. I don't know if you can 
see this map, but... circuit. See the air one there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let this run overnight and see if I develop any leaks. The only issue that I think might happen is here, is I had to get a connector. Now, what I originally bought was a 30-foot section of uh, tubing, and um, just wasn't enough. Um, so I wound up buying an additional 30 feet, um, which was more than I needed. Probably about uh, probably about 50 feet would have done it, <clears throat> um, and uh, would have been a you know perfect. Because uh, I have a lot of extra tubing uh, that runs into the bucket, so um, that's it. So I'll let this puppy go overnight and uh, see how it works. I hope this helps a little bit, and uh, I'll let you know what I come up with. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm using my wife's uh, meat thermometer to kind of test the air. I'm not sure if that'll actually work, um, but we'll just see. Um, what I did was I put the heater in, cranked it up to 80. I'm just going to let it sit overnight <clears throat> and um, check it tomorrow and see what uh, see what happens. And uh, I'm also going to stuff some insulation around the edges. Um, actually, not insulation, just newspaper. Um, see if that kind of retains more heat uh, instead of just letting it you know come right out of the tubes so uh, we'll see how that works and then tomorrow I'll check it and see if uh, you know what I need to adjust and that's it okay so what I did was I um, took some newspaper and just jammed it around the edge and uh, what I also did was um, put my bucket inside a bucket to keep it off the concrete floor and then I added some insulation on the bottom what I'm going to do is eventually um, fill this with uh, newspaper or spray and foam insulation and uh, have a completely contained heated thing okay it's been almost 24 hours since this has been running and let's uh, turn it on and see what the temperature is Seventy-four degrees. Hmm. Okay. So that's seventy-four degrees. Now let's see what the water temperature is at. Really? Temperature in the water is 81 degrees. Okay, which is what I expected. <clears throat> 